Why do you need Makita's new deep cut bandsaw? To make deep cuts, of course. Let's take a closer look. This is Makita's GBP-01 and is part of their XGT lineup, which means it runs on their 40 volt batteries. It's a brushless tool, has a ton of other features, Let's dig right in, take a closer look at each one of these features, and then of course, we're gonna use it as well, and then come back and talk about pricing and warranty. We got the Makita GBP-01, and it's their 40 volt brushless deep cut bandsaw. So cordless bandsaw running on their XGT platform, which the XGT platform is their newest platform, and that's all their 40 volt tools. Now you get more than just more voltage when you step up to higher voltage batteries uh, like their 40 volt because we know that uh, volts times amps equals watts and watts is going to be your power but if you step up the voltage and bring down the amps to get the same amount of watts out you can do that more efficiently you can do that with less heat so really and truly that's why a lot of your higher powered wired in tools run on you know 240 volt even higher 460 volt three phase and that's because it's easier on motors, uh, less heat, uh, more efficient, uh, things like that. So again, same type of idea, not that we're gonna gain tons of efficiency on a tool like this, but arguably there is uh, some more efficient numbers when you step up to the voltage, like in this 40 volt, rather than doing it with a lesser 18 volt, like their LXT platform in the 18 volt, which they have great tools in that as well. But anyway, so for a large tool like this, where we have deep cuts we're gonna be making, where we're gonna have wide cuts we're gonna be making in a big bandsaw, we can develop a lot more power and do it more efficiently with more voltage. Now, in addition to the wide mouth here, so we get a full five inches of cut, as well as we get a depth right at five inches as well. And we'll test that here in a few moments. But in addition to that, we get some other niceties here. We get an LED light right there. It's gonna shine down on our work. We also get an adjustable uh, fence right here where we can drop this down so that if we're cutting on something that can rest against it, we'll show that here in one moment. That's really more of a tool rest than a, uh, a backstop, if you will. For safety, we get a trigger lock. So we cannot press the trigger until we depress this, and that is ambidextrous. We can push it on this side or on the flip side. You can do the same thing and push it on that side as well. So a left-hander, right-hander, doesn't matter. Either one of those is going to work just fine. And we get a rafter hook as well. Nice large handle on the front side for getting a hold of that because this is a big saw. This is not a compact saw. This is a big saw, especially being a cordless unit. This is definitely getting up there where you're going to have to manhandle this sometimes and get a good grip on there. We have tool-free blade changes and this is going to actually set the tension on uh, on that blade. As you can see, we don't have a blade in there right now, which we will fix that here in just one moment. Now on the power side, we have six different speeds here that we can set. So one to six, and that's gonna take us all the way up to 630 feet per second. That's pretty fast for a bandsaw. So you can kind of set the speed based on the application or based on the material that you're cutting. So again, you've got that variability right there built in. Now we'll see whether or not this has a variable speed trigger. I doubt that it does. Usually, Usually on a bandsaw, you're grabbing a hold of it, you're setting your dial and your max speed and just grabbing the trigger and going. Uh, but we'll see in just one moment whether we have uh, actual variable speed or not. Let's get a blade in this thing. Very easy to install the blade. We push these two green tabs up, that one, and then that one. And now we see our two rollers. One of these is gonna freewheel. So that's gonna freewheel and this is gonna be our motor driver, our drive roller here. Now included with the kit, Makita includes a blade. Be careful with that, it's nice to have some cut proof gloves on. Oh, thanks Makita. And then we wanna make sure that we install this right. We see arrows everywhere. On our, on our pulleys, on our rollers here, we see the arrows going and we wanna make sure that our teeth are going with that rotation. And you see the rotation is stamped there on the blade as well. Now I like to put it in my rollers first. So get them up there in those bearings, in those rollers, and get it set all the way down in. And make sure that you're seated all the way. And 
and then we can close this guy. And then I'm going to lock this down. So that locks all the way down. Now there's tension on it. Before there was no tension. You can see I can open it all the way as well, but I'm going to close it. Now the blade is tensioned. And now I can throw a battery in here. And I like to just kind of pull the trigger a couple of times. Bump it a few times. I can make sure it's running right there. And it's not a bad idea either to go ahead and just confirm I know it is by the way it was running on there but just to show you guys the blade is running nice it's in the right places it's still seated all the way down here in these rollers that's the main thing make sure this thing's seated all the way down you can see there's a drive roll or a there's a, uh, a guide roller that sits all the way down so the base of this blade rides against it as well as these double ball bearings right here where it actually keeps the blade from deflecting so make sure it's riding on all of those Now we wanted to see, do we have a variable speed trigger? First, we need a battery. And by the way, this is the five amp hour, 40 volt battery. So let's see. Oh, we do have a variable speed trigger. So I can go pretty slow with it. So that's even nicer. So we can set our max speed here. So on six, we know we get 630 feet per second, or feet per minute, not feet per second. So 630 feet per minute. And I can also slow that down to one. So a lot slower cut. So based on whether you're cutting aluminum, whether you're cutting stainless steel, whether you're cutting solid steel stock, what have you, you can change that speed accordingly and according to your speeds and feeds chart. Let's take this battery off again. And there's an Allen wrench lock right here that usually resides right here on the tool. So you can see it fits in that hole right there. I can put it in that hole and then it clips down behind that. And what that's used for is our guide back here. So if I loosen this up, I can slide this down and again we can use that now for the saw resting against your whatever you're cutting and it's not going to try to walk on you or try to move forward or anything else because that'll act as your backstop if you will. Let's go over and cut on some stuff. Now here's some simple unistrut, something that's usually used in uh, HVAC, electrical, uh, you name it. In construction there's unistrut used about in every building especially when it comes to mechanical stuff. So I'm gonna set my speed on about three and we're gonna go at it. Wow, that makes quick work of it. And even though this is a big saw, this is really easy to control. You can see I can really fillet about as thin as I want. So I can really control this. Let's try something thicker. So this is a piece of two by four material. We're gonna go ahead, so this is an honest two inches by four inches, in case you don't believe me. Two by four. And it's eighth inch thick as well. Again, we'll measure that. So one, two, five would be an eighth inch, a little thicker than an eighth inch. Probably got a rolled corner on it. So now we're gonna try it vertically. So we've got to stand it up where it's four inches deep. make another cut. I think I'm using the wrong blade. We're going to go to an 18 tooth blade. I didn't even pay attention. I'm sure that uh, 
nor did I read the instructions. But yeah, I think I wiped out that blade. I'm sure that was fine for bimetal for that, uh, for that strut, but probably for that eighth inch thick steel, it did not like that. We go to an 18 tooth blade. Okay, now we got our 18 tooth blade on. Well, that was stupid of me. Sorry, Makita. Uh, so yeah, I did not even look at that blade was definitely fine for a thinner steel, but with this hard uh, eighth inch steel, a lot better to have a metal blade on there. Anyway, let's make another cut. So we did it deep, now we've got it wide. So again, true four by material. I'm gonna start diagonally. Wow, that cuts so much nicer with the right blade on there. When it comes to your work or to a job, there's not much more important than efficiency and the ability to take your tool to your work versus taking the work to the tool is typically a lot more efficient manner. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, listen, it's great to have in the shop a huge bandsaw that has all types of features and automation to it. But the fact is, if you have to carry all your work pieces over to it to make the cuts versus taking a handy portable tool to the work, and making your cuts there, it's typically going to save you time if you can do the latter. And this 40 volt deep cut bandsaw is going to do that. It's going to now give you the ability to make five inch deep cuts, five inch wide cuts. So those uh, four by four steel beams or two by four material like we saw, cutting unistrut, what have you, gonna be very easy for this saw to handle. Now we did make a big mistake by using the wrong blade that was included in the saw to cut that structural steel it was not the right choice. But once we threw on the, the uh, I believe it was the 18 tooth blade, then it cut right through it with no problem whatsoever. So that was user error on our part. Other than that, this saw does a great job. The 40 volt battery is gonna give you plenty of cuts. We love the speed control on this and we still have the variable speed trigger. Very easy to make blade changes on this and the plastic cover is gonna keep a lot of that material from getting in those pulleys and, and everything else or those drive pulleys. Uh, so be sure to check it out. Again, it's the Makita GBP-01 uh, for the bare tool setup. You're looking at about $499, so right at $500 for this tool. So yes, that's a hefty price, but again, this is a tool that's gonna make some heavy duty cuts. You're also gonna get a three year warranty with Makita. We haven't seen a kit price on this. Everything we've seen has just been bare tool. We'll have a link in the description where you can find these. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And by the way, could you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.